Like, there's been some madness going on with me and TikTok right now, fam. So I thought, you know what? Let me make this quick video so that the YouTube community are kept up to date with what's going on with me and TikTok right now. So if you haven't followed me, go follow me after this video on TikTok. So what inspired me to make a TikTok account? Now, I'm sure TikTok's been around for like two years. I never thought I would ever make a TikTok account. One of my subscribers, them underneath one of my videos, left a comment saying, why don't you make YouTube short videos? And I'm sure they also said, why don't you make TikTok videos? There's a brother that follows me. I also follow him back called My Nature Music. Go follow him on Instagram, My Nature Music. He goes by the name of Mini. I think he's from South East London. He talks on the trill shit, on the real shit, on the royal thing and that, and other stuff. He was posting up videos on his Instagram talking about how his TikTok account has just been skyrocketing and that. Like within like a couple of months, he surpassed his followers on Instagram and he might have been on Instagram for years or whatever. Really. So anyway, he was making some videos saying how his TikTok account was skyrocketing and that. So I thought, oh yeah, it could be a good idea to make TikTok videos and that. But then I thought about something that happened about four months ago. My girl's a mortgage broker, as you know. And she told me about one of her clients was earning about 50 grand a year just from TikTok videos and they were able to buy a property. Imagine being able to buy a property from your, your YouTube account or your TikTok account or your Instagram account. So I was thinking, do you know what? What's the harm in trying? <laughs> what have I got to lose? Yeah, this is the mentality we need to develop. What is there to lose, blood? I'm already on social media. I'm not actually, I'm not exactly stepping out of my comfort zone and, oh, you know, going to adventure to un unknown territory and that but I was already on social media and that. so I thought you know what what's there what's there to lose in it let me just make some TikTok videos and that um, and the thing is man's got a whole catalogue so I don't even need to make new TikTok videos I just cut up my old existing videos and just upload them there so boom so it's actually the day before my birthday so it's the 20th of September right now man's gonna be 31 tomorrow and it so um, let's say about a week and a half two weeks ago I made a TikTok account so boom, started uploading some videos and that. I'm getting a few views and that, like 500 views per video and that. Cool. Then something happened where I was uploading too much videos at once and it was going to zero. Like there was no views and that. So what the fuck's happening? So what it is, is uh, TikTok will think that you're a bot. If you're uploading too much videos and that, like man uploaded like four videos in one hour, innit? They didn't even push them through the algorithm and that because TikTok will just think that you're a bot. So anyway... So I was uploading videos slowly and that. And one of the videos them that I uploaded was obviously from my YouTube channel. It was the video where I was talking about the mum that caused the son's murder and that. So I uploaded that video. Blood. Last week Saturday, which was like four or five days ago. Last week Saturday, I uploaded that video. Look, a 14 year old black you in East London. Go and watch it for yourself in here, but something along the lines of, I think he was walking down the street, some older youths, they must have stopped him, spoke to him, bought him some chicken and chips. And yeah, they basically said to him when they saw him the next time or the time after that, we've looked after you, so now you owe us. Yeah, you need to work for us, innit? So they basically groomed him into selling drugs. So what they did was, they was making him sell crack and heroin and that white and brown, you get me? And they made him hold on to between six and eight hundred pound worth of food. Six and eight hundred pound worth of crack and heroin. And his mum thinking that she's being a saint, thinking that she's actually doing him. I mean, obviously, in her heart, you know, she feels like she's doing the right thing. But she, what she has to understand is what are the other people on the other side going to think and react and how are they going to deal with this situation so the mum has discovered that the son is selling drugs uh, she found the stash between six and eight hundred pounds worth of crack and heroin do you know what she did she disposed of it now most of you are watching this right now a normal logical person would think yeah well if a mum found her son selling drugs and it's worth six to eight hundred pounds of course she would dispose of it what else is she going to do is she going to smoke it with her son no, she's gonna sponsor. No, she's gonna dispose of it. Yeah, that's what normal logical civilians would think. But when you're thinking about man them on the road, they're not logical civilians. So them man there are gonna take that as a disrespect. Them man there are gonna take that as fam, you 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 you've got rid of my, 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 my money. Yeah, you basically thrown away my money. You owe us money. So obviously. 
the mum is disposed of the six to eight hundred pound worth of food and that and obviously the youths them are going to want their money back or at least their food all right you, you can't give us the food but we want their money back so you know what they did they made the youth go up to country yeah so he's trapping ot county lives whatever you want to call it nowadays and that i used to call it ot back in the day to work off the debt next thing you know i think a couple months later in it a car pulled up and blamed him shot him in the head all because it was something to do with his mum disposing of the food. When I saw that, it made me mad, you know. It made me fix. As I was watching it, I was like, oh my God. Because the mum said, yeah, I found the drugs and that and I disposed of it. And right then and there, I didn't even need to see what was going on in the next two, three minutes of the, the documentary, innit? Right then and there, I was fixing myself. Oh my God, does this fucking bitch know what trouble she has caused? Literally. Like, did she think that she could just take the drugs and dispose of it and the youths then will be like, oh, it's all right. It's only six to eight hundred pounds worth of drugs. It's cool. I understand how you feel as a mother. I would do the same if I was a father in it yeah, and going about their business. No. What, the, what she should have done, what a man would have done, a man, a father who is, has somewhat uh, street smartness about him. Do you know what he would have done? He would have found the youths and given it back to them. Now, if he wants to take it to a physical thing and smack them up, then that's up to him, innit? But most fathers who are logical, six to eight hundred pounds worth of drugs, they would have found the boys and given it back to them and, and then run them blood club, tell them, don't contact my son ever again. Blood, let me tell you something, yeah. That video got to like 20,000 views in one day, you know? Blood, my highest viewed video on YouTube was the one I was talking about Northampton and that. That video has been there for like two years and that's only got like 14,000 views and that. This one video on TikTok, the mum who calls the son's murder, that video went to 20,000 views in one day, blood. The amount of comments, obviously a lot of hate and that. And you know what, man, I'll put my hands up there and maybe I shouldn't have used the B word, yeah, to describe the mum. But man's just talking off the dome and being real. That video got so much views and traction, it was getting nuts, blood. I'm talking about that. Like, my followers and that was going up, yeah? The comments and that, obviously, man was getting bare hate comments and that. Who the fuck are you to talk, talk about this and how dare you disrespect? The boy's mum, yeah? Go check out that video, the, the mother who caused the son's murder. The boy's mum come in the comment section of that video, was like, you disrespected me and leaving all these comments. Because on TikTok and that, you can only, in a comment, you can only put down like a hundred characters and that. It's not like other platforms where you can just keep <laughs> writing these long diatribes and that, and long fat scrolls of comments and that. You only get like a hundred characters, for example, then you have to um, put a new comment underneath that. So anyway, you can't put like a thousand words down on that. So anyway, boom. So yeah, she come underneath the comment section and that cursing and that. And then the video got blocked. Yeah. I went on my TikTok account at like 10 p.m. that night and I seen the video got blocked. So I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So anyway, I was going to appeal it and I thought, nah, fuck it. But then I thought to myself, it says the video had been blocked because of uh, reports of bullying and harassment. Well, first and foremost, I didn't mention no one's name. How can you bully someone? How can you bully an individual that you haven't mentioned their name? Like, obviously, you can bully a specific type of individual. Let's say, for example, the, the, the gay community and that. Yeah, you can, like, make videos that are, seem like you're bullying that sort of community. But you cannot physically bully an individual if you haven't even named their name. Yeah, you haven't even mentioned their name and I was talking about a situation and the thing is this situation applied to a few different people this situation I was talking about happened in East London and that one girl was like oh yeah the same thing happened in North London then one person was saying that oh is it this person you're talking about or is it this person you're talking about so like that situation they applied to a few different people and that so anyway so the video got blocked so I was just going to leave it in it and I thought to myself nah man I'm not harassing or bullying no one I'm not mentioning no one's name and that yeah, it's kind of a, a specific situation at that. But at the same time, I'm not mentioning no one's name. So I appealed it. Man, I appealed it. Boom. Um, so I'm sitting down thinking, how the fuck did this video even get blocked and that? Then I clocked. The mum probably took my video and put it in a WhatsApp group and said, listen, I need all of you. Look, you know women are in WhatsApp groups and that. I mean, man, I'm in, I'm in a, I've got a WhatsApp group that I created and that. 
A woman will be in a WhatsApp group with 10 people here, a next WhatsApp group with 20 people there, next WhatsApp group with five people there. She probably put the video in the WhatsApp groups and said, listen, I don't like what this guy's saying. Please, can you report this video so it gets taken down? And obviously, you get me, it's an emotional situation for the woman. So she probably put it in there and then everyone just obviously jumped on a bandwagon and, that, and they all reported the video. Once your video gets reported by like 5, 10, 20 people and that, they just automatically remove it. You have to appeal it. So what happened is obviously man appealed the video. I'm assuming the TikTok people then sat down and watched the video and looked for signs of harassment and bullying and worked out, well, this is a bullshit false claim and re-uploaded the video. So man got the video back and that. Obviously, since their man still be getting bare hate and that. So when the ban happened, when they blocked this video, I thought to myself, right, I've got a few strikes and that because people were leaving comments saying the boy's name. So they were blocking the comments and striking the video and shit like that. So I thought, you know what? What I'm going to do is make a... So my account's called JY's TV, obviously, on TikTok. I made a new backup account at the same time uh, whilst the ban was going on called JY's TV 2.0. So I thought, nah, I'm not going to let them block me on, on TikTok and that um, in a couple of months and then have to start again. I'm just going to build up two accounts simultaneously. See, this way, bro, this is why I'm in a position that I'm in right now, because I plan for the future and I think ahead. If I thought about this before, I would have made two YouTube channels and that, but I can't see my YouTube channel getting blocked and that. Man, has been on there for four years talking the same thing. I don't see why my channel will get blocked. Obviously, I've only ever had one copyright strike and that's because I uploaded a video that was... I can't remember copywriting some sort of someone's content. It was a reaction video on it. Um, been on there four years, almost five years in November, in it. So I know what I'm doing. I'll never get blocked or banned on on YouTube and that. So anyway, man's made the JY's TV 2.0 account whilst the video on the original account got blocked. Appealed it. I got the video back. So I still got my normal JY's TV account. Got the video back. Made the JY's TV 2.0 account. So I'm uploading videos to both. Basically the same videos, but some videos I'm uploading on there and not there and there and not there. So anyway, so what day was it? I think it was, it must have been Monday evening going into Tuesday morning, yeah? Which was like two days ago, yeah? Or yesterday, whatever. Yeah, or it was Sunday evening going into Monday morning or Monday morning going into Tuesday, Monday evening going into Tuesday morning, yeah? Like, like two in the morning, I woke up. I just thought, let me just upload the video. You know when I made that video where I'm sitting in my car talking about all the defects and that? Yeah, showing how fucked up my car is and that. And obviously, mum was saying that you should not be driving a Mercedes living in your mum's house and that. You know what I'm saying? When you could be saving that £500 and putting that towards a deposit for a property and that. Then people there that live at home with their parents, they're so dumb, blood. You should use, seize that opportunity to save your Ross Clark money. How are you driving a fucking Mercedes 300, C300, C2? I don't care what Mercedes it is. You should not be driving no Mercedes. You're living in a box room upstairs. Literally, it's people right now. Might not be you, but it's people them that you know probably. They're living in a box room right now. But yet still, they got a Mercedes outside. But they're peeking through their blinds. At nine in the morning, eight in the morning, on a Saturday or Monday or whatever, in it, yeah, making sure that that rubbish truck don't scratch up their car and that, like, it's dumb. Blood. Let me tell you, yeah, that video went viral as well. So viral in one day, less than twenty-four hours, blood. This video got like twenty-five thousand views, blood. It got so many views, it went so viral because obviously people were in the comment section, they were trying to. It was funny, it was 50-50. It was like the Crips versus the Bloods, yeah? It was like half and half. Some people were agreeing with what I'm saying and others were like, oh, you, yo, why are you pocket watching and that? Live, let and live, live, what is it? Live and let live. Oh, you, you got too much time to run out of people. Other people were, were backing what I was saying. They're like, yeah, he's right, bro. Why the fuck are you living at your parents' house and still driving a Mercedes and that when you could be saving your money, innit? Anyway, that video went so viral, blood. That some, a couple of people took it off of... My, my TikTok account and uploaded it onto Instagram. Now, I've never even really heard of this Instagram page called Fashion Concept. It's about the urban community in London and that drippy people. And I'm all seeing them post up videos of, you know, like the girl, what's that chick's name? What's the girl from Top Boy's name? <sighs> Man just spent the whole weekend before watching Top Boy and I can't remember the girl's name. But yeah, the main light skin, little short girl in Top Boy and that. 
can't remember her name. Anyway, they were posting up videos of her, posting up videos, all these different gyal and that in, in the space. You are like social media influencers that like just black people and that. Blah, man's got like about, I don't know, so far and it's only been like less than like, what, 20, 12 hours and that. Man's got like 50 followers just from that. Man's got bear man coming onto my page and that liking all my team. I'm like, rah, just imagine like that one video, you know. All it takes that one video to go viral with that. And blood, your social media like status and that will start going up, blood. And I say to my girl yesterday, I see my content on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, like playing a game of darts as a novice. Imagine I'm standing far away from the dartboard. I'm a novice, I'm shit. As long as I keep throwing darts, I could have a thousand darts. As long as I keep throwing darts, most of the time I'm gonna miss. All it takes is that one dart to hit bullseye and man's gonna blow blood. That's how you have to see life, blood. You keep making attempts, keep failing, one day you're gonna succeed because you're gonna run out of fails, my brother, yeah? You can only fail so much times before you end up succeeding, blood. So you gotta view life like a game of darts, blood. As a novice, you could be the shittest person at darts. It doesn't matter. As long as you can hit near the dartboard, if you throw enough darts, eventually one day you're gonna land on bullseye, blood. You just gotta keep making attempts. Think about it this way. If you're standing playing darts and that, what's the chances of you throwing your first dart and hitting bullseye? You must, if you're a man right now, you must have played darts once in your life. The first dart you ever threw, you never landed bullseye, did you? But I guarantee you, after playing darts for a while, after throwing a thousand darts and that, hopefully don't take that much time, but after throwing a few hundred or a few twenty darts and that, you land bullseye, fam. That's how you got to see life, blood. You just got to keep making attempts, blood. One day you're going to land, blood. You can't, you, you can't continue to fail forever, blood. You have to succeed, but you have to keep putting in the work. You have to keep putting in the effort and that. I'm not listening to these YouTubers, but I've had a man on YouTube not talk to me directly, but heard YouTubers say, if you ain't got um, 10,000 uh, subscribers or followers and that within the first six months, then quit YouTube. Fuck off, man. I'm not listening to that bullshit, blood. That's a loser's mentality. That's just the sort of person that just wants to try something for a few months, a year or so, and they don't get the results, then they just quit, blood. I'm not a quitter, blood. I'm not a quitter, fam. I will keep making this content, blood. Especially, you know, it's not hard for me because I enjoy this thing, innit? Yeah, man, that's thought. You know what? Let me just let you lot, uh, give you lot the load that was going on, on on my TikTok account, innit? So go follow me, JYS TV on TikTok and also JYS TV 2.0 on TikTok, innit? I thought to myself, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let this TikTok account go for the next couple of months and then get banned. So I thought, you know what? Let me make a backup account just in case they try to ban me and that. What's the chance of them banning both accounts and that? So, um, yeah, that's it for today, man. Stay worse. Don't know.